Hello folks, this is the third video uh, on the tutorial number six that I'm making uh, for the current playlist and deals with the sim some simple issues in the linear buckling of a column. Ac uh, of a column. Now, uh, in tutorial four, what I did, I looked at the simple uh, free, uh, free fixed uh, column and apply an axial load on it and uh, it's a very simple problem came up with the uh, the buckling loads and compared it with the uh, Euler buckling formula and it worked fine there's no problem and then I mentioned that in real life uh, the Euler buckling problem suffers from the fact that it assumes all everything is linear there is no eccentricity etc in a, real, in a real problem, one often deals with this situation where there's imperfections and there is a, a, a eccentric axial load, etc. So what people do in a situation like that is they model uh, the, 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 the buckling with a lateral load, which kind of emulates the concept of imperfection. Now, in tutorial five, I showed you that if you're not careful and you put the axial load and the buck uh, and the lateral load in the same buckling step, you get numbers that are that are either um, not reasonable or in fact wrong or hard to interpret. And I pointed out that one should not really putting these two lateral load and the axial load in the same buckling step. So the present video, tutorial number six, it puts them in different steps. So let me go ahead and tell you what the problem is once again. There's a quick review of uh, four and five tutorials, four and five. Um, it's, uh, you have a, a, a fixed uh, free uh, column and on it acts an axial load and a lateral load. And in the present tutorial, notice that I have two steps. Static step one, where I apply that lateral load and buckling step, where it takes the information from the step right above it, geometric information from the step right above it. And once I apply the ax uh, compressive, compressive axial load, it'll give me the buckling factor. So you can see that the lateral load goes into the static step one and the, uh, the axial load reference axial load goes goes into static uh, or the buckling step one where i have to give it a reference uh, load for example one newton and the the uh, the buckling factor is going to be a uh, load factor is going to be spit out by the 3d experience now so uh, this is in a sense what uh, we're doing here so the source of the confusion let me go back and remind you what the source of confusion may be when people uh, are exposed to Euler buckling and then they see only a single load and later on when they try to do a, a, a problem which involves several loads uh, then uh, the question is well what do I do with these loads which one do I multiply by the buckling factor etc uh, here is the uh, the analytical solution Euler buckling formula there's a single axial load no eccentricity etc and you can stick it into this formula and you get the uh, the value of the buckling load. This is the load factor. If you put a one newton here, multiply by that, it's going to be the, uh, the the load according to the buckling formula. Or when you do FEA, it's going to be uh, the the buckling load. Now, uh, let me remind you that uh, in 3D experience, uh, which buried in it is the abacus program for the solver, there is no two dimensional element. So I'm using three dimensional elements. So this is a, a three-dimensional uh, linear element, two-noted element. And in order to make this thing behave like a two-dimensional element, like B21, for example, I have to put some constraints here. These extra constraints here that you see is because I want to make sure that this does not move in a out-of-plane direction so that essentially I'm solving the two-dimensional problem. Please take a look at video four in particular to see uh, some of the more issues about this. It's not an issue, it's just that why I'm doing this thing. Now, uh, 
because we know that uh, this is a perfect solution or an ideal solution, we're going to have to impose a lateral load here. This could be because of the uh, because of the geometrical imperfection or because maybe there's a wind load here, etc. It doesn't matter. So we have a lateral load and we want to analyze it under the axial compression and find out what the, uh, the buckling factor is. The buckling factor should not go with this. This is a constant load that I'm going to be applying as a separate load in static step one. Now, this stuff is the content of tutorial five. So I showed you what happens if you put both loads, both the axial one and the lateral one, in the uh, buckle step. So this is from tutorial five. And some of these things may not sense. I mean, when the lateral load is very small, it's okay, but when the lateral load becomes bigger because it is included in the buckling step, the multiplier is also multiplied by that buckling lateral, uh, lateral load, and that will give you things that don't make sense. Now here, I'm gonna put the compressive axial load and the lateral load in different steps. The lateral load goes into a static step, and when, once that is applied, once it finishes running that portion, that step, then I say do a buckling for that configuration for me. And this column, these are the magnitude of the lateral load. So for example, when there's zero, this is the ideal solution. Uh, can be compared with the uh, Euler buckling formula. Okay, now as you increase the lateral load, notice that in the tutorial five, these numbers started changing crazy in a crazy way. Okay, but here you can see that actually it doesn't change that much. Yes, of course, the lateral load, constant lateral load that I'm putting in step one, static step one, does have an effect, but its effect is not going to show up until uh, a while down, down the road. So here's what happened. This blue one is what I got from tutorial five, when both loads were in the same buckling step, okay? Here, this uh, uh, orange one gives you the buckling factor when they're placed in different step. Lateral load in a static step, then followed by axial load, and these are gonna be spit out. And the next one is going to be exactly the same diagram, except that notice that the scale is different. I don't go from lateral load of 0 to 1 million Newton. I go from 0 to 100, mil, uh, 100, 100 Newton. It's the same plot, except that it's restricted to the very uh, left corner. And this is what I got when you put them in there for, for a lateral load of 100 Newton. This is what I got when I put it in, in the same uh, step, buckling step. But now you see that it's completely different as far as uh, uh, as far as the the value is concerned. Okay, so this is lateral load of 100 when they're put in different steps, as I indicated above, will give you a buckling factor which is very close to these other ones. Not the same; it does have an effect, of course. But uh, there we are. <clears throat> now, the moral story is that if you know loads that are constant, if you know loads that their what their magnitude is. Do not include those loads in the buckling step. And I'll talk about more about this issue again in uh, tutorial seven, because what you, what, what you want to know is what happens when you have multiple loads and you want to do post buckling, tutorial seven. Now, incidentally, this is the setup for our present problem. We have two steps, static step, where the lateral load is done. And then once it finishes, we go to the buckling step. And notice that this, this is dark, this dark, a band is no longer either absent or no longer dark. That's because when you go from static step to the buckling step, this load is not taken into account. The geometric, the geometric shape of the deformed configuration is taken into account. Now, obviously, axial load, I have to do it myself here, and I put the dummy, dummy one Newton, and we see uh, what the, the load factor is going to be. Okay, I'm going to try this thing for a hundred Newton. As uh, you know, remember from the previous table, I had Z all the way from zero to uh, one million Newton. I'm going to try it with 100 Newton, which uh, actually was this. So I should be getting that number. Pretty much that number. 100 Newton is right here, th that number. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the problem. Uh, let me uh, make a straight line here. 
So I'm going to under essential, I'm going to make a line <coughs> and uh, I'm going to do it by point and direction. For a point, I'm going to create one at location 000, zero, zero right there. And for a line, it's going to be in the direction Z and the height of it is going to be 1000 millimeters. So it's going to be a uh, one meter long uh, bar column. <coughs> now, in the previous videos, videos four and five, what I did, I created a, a location, a point here, because if the cross section is not circular, uh, the shape of this cross section uh, is, is determined by the location of that uh, uh, extra point. But because, and I, and I mentioned when I was doing a video, mentioned that this point is not necessary because we are dealing with a circular cross section, uh, and but I did create it anyway. But in this tutorial, I'm not gonna create that point. Okay, I'm just not, not going to create that extra point here because the cross section is circular, the orientation doesn't matter. Okay, let's apply our material here. So we go to tools uh, and under uh, create material. Uh, there is a create material. This is steel, so I'm going to call, call it steel. December uh, twenty. 6 2023 <clears throat> and once it creates in the uh, in the list then i'm going to apply it and then input the value okay so uh let me refresh this thing right here okay so i'm going to say apply Let me refresh this again. <clears throat> okay, apply, and I'm gonna close that. Incidentally, I'm doing these things with the uh, 3D experience release 2024. <clears throat> Just gonna put the properties of uh, steel. I'm assuming linear elastic analysis because otherwise this business of linear buckling does not make sense anyways, okay? <clears throat> so structural, uh, abacus multi-physics, mechanical, elasticity, elastic, uh, 200,000 megapascal, Poisson ratio 0.3, but that of, that's, that of course is not used. All right, good. <clears throat> All right, okay. So now we're going to mesh it. We go to uh, uh, structural model creation. Use beam elements to do that, so uh, MTFEM. <coughs> uh, let's go to uh, mesh, beam element. Select this line and 100 millimeter long. So there is uh, each mesh is, uh, each element is 100 millimeters. So the whole thing is a thousand, so there's gonna be 10 elements there. Okay, and now we're gonna go to the properties where I def define the cross section. So the first thing we will define is the profile of the cross section. That's the circle. So I'm going to change this thing to circular and uh, radius 60, 60, uh, 60 millimeters. <clears throat> and then we define the cross section on uh, beam cross section. So we go expand this thing, beam section. We select this beam. And for the cross section, I select the beam profile one, which was circular cross section. And notice that I can close this thing without actually selecting the orientation point. I select it and close it and update. Good. So there is the profile, there is the beam, uh, beam section, and these are our elements. Let me close these, don't need it. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a quick save here in case there is a communication issue. <coughs> Once again, I want to remind you that if the cross section is not circular, you uh, you will have you will need an orientation point. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead to our uh, structural scenario creation. Uh, 
Uh, it's a structure problem that we're doing, and we're going to use the model that I just created. It's the finite element model. We say OK. All right. Uh, here is the red exclamation mark. It tells you that we don't have a procedure defined yet. So first step is a static step. So we go to procedure. Uh, this is static step, static, static step. I can call it applying lateral load, okay? Uh, maybe just to make it uh, easier to see, I will say apply lateral, lateral, okay? Uh, all right, so uh, total time step is one. This is a dummy time, and I'm going to start with 0 0.01, 0 0.1. Uh, and uh, notice that uh, I will... I will include the geometric nonlinearity uh, because uh, that portion is not a buckling analysis. That portion is just static. I can include it, and this may affect the actual the, the the configuration of the of the beam. But anyway, uh, it's it's okay. I'll just include. You can also exclude it if you know that there there will not be large deformation, etc. Or or uh, there is no plasticity, whatever. Okay, good. Now, notice that here is my first static, uh, first step. If you look at the presentation or the slides, I don't have this thing uh, called lateral, but it's called static step one, okay? I put lateral here for our own benefit. Okay, so what do we know here? So we know that this bottom is clamped, so we go to uh, boundary condition. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, fixed displacement, select the bottom point. It's clamped, so all six degrees of freedom are fixed. I could have used clamped if I wanted to. Now, this whole thing is not going to move in the direction x. That's to make it really a two-dimensional element. So I'll do exactly the same thing on that line. Does not move in the direction x. And rotation about y and z are zero. This makes this the present problem from a 3D element B31 into two-dimensional element B21 because I don't have B21 in in uh, 3D experience. Okay, <clears throat> uh, what do we have here? Now we're going to apply our lateral uh, lateral load. So in the first, remember, in the first step, which is the current step, there is no axial force. So I'm going to go to loads. Here's the force. Here is the point that I'm going to apply it in the direction y. 100 newton. Remember, I said that I'm going to use 100 newton, and uh, that's uh, pretty much it. And I can run it. If I if I run it now, it'll give me the result of deflection of this beam after 100 newton was applied. Okay, so let me do that, or I can do everything and come and run it at the end. So it's going to run the lat the static and then buckling. But I would rather do it right now. So let's go ahead and uh, do this thing, uh, uh, model and scenario. No problem there. Uh, simulation check to see, to pick up any trivial errors, if there are any. I don't anticipate any issues here. Okay, completed. <coughs> Simulation check. Uh, it's just going to take a, a few more seconds. Yep. Okay, good. Close it, and then we're going to run it. Nothing fancy is going to happen. This is just going to bend. That's all. That's all. And then once, once it reaches the end, you're going to say, oh, stop there. Let's do a buckling now. Okay, so the load is not going to be acting anymore. It's just the shape that has changed. Okay, and this change in shape, for those of you who may be a bit more theoretically oriented, will affect that geometric stiffness matrix that you see it in your theoretical textbooks. <clears throat> Let's not worry about it. Okay, good. Nothing fancy. Let me, see. Let me bring this thing down. Close that. So if you look at, for example, the, I don't know, displacement. There we are. There we are. Uh, is this not bending? Let me, let me just check check for a second. 
this should I, I wonder what wh which direction do I apply the load hang in there so let's go to the load force in the direction y yeah so this should actually bend uh, let's see now it, uh, let me let me go ahead uh, to the uh, results okay so uh, yeah by the way the reason you don't see any bending effect is because I included the nonlinearity whenever you include the nonlinearity what happens is that this the, the scale factor for deformation is going to be set equal to one. If you don't believe it, left double click on this, select the, 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 uh, the middle tab, see, scale factor equal to one. If I make this, this thing a thousand, there, see that it's bent. If I make it 10,000, See, it was not wrong. It's just that when you when you include that nonlinearity effect, it immediately sets this thing equal to one. If I want to, I can actually send this thing, to, put it back to, uh, <clears throat> uh, put it back to uh, one. Okay, there we are. Apply. There was nothing wrong with it. Uh, but I want to show you something before I go and include this. Uh, the well, that, that's okay. So uh, I'll, I'll show that show that to you later on. Good. By the way, there's no reason to look at three dimension. All we have to do is to look at the front view because we turn this thing essentially into a into a two dimensional prop, right? So that's all we need. Okay, good. So let's now go and include. Let's go back to that scenario and include a include a buckling step right there. See, we already have we already have this thing. By the way, I could have called this thing right click let me change this thing to lateral lateral load how about that uh let, let me double click double click on this thing because in in the presentation i changed these names i call it lateral load okay that's okay so that we can do it for uh, our uh, <coughs> bookkeeping right so, okay so procedure uh procedure now we're going to do buckling right there okay you can see that and uh, I'm calling this thing, uh, uh, remember this one I called, uh, what is that? Uh, for the step I called it static step one lateral, I'll call it he here, I put down, uh, uh, how about where, where I apply the axial load, okay? Axial, good. Leave these things the way they are, we, the, the default is gonna do it, no problem. Now, <clears throat> Okay, notice a couple of things. First of all, this load, lateral load, did not transfer into our buckling step. That's because the load is not going to get transferred, but the shape is going to be used. Okay, if I do right click here, feature manager, you see that when you look at the load, the lateral load, uh, it was right here, lateral load, you see this? This is not a solid. This is not a solid blue bar, okay? So that means that this is not transferred there. Good, so let me close that. So all we have to do is now to apply our axial load. So we go to, uh, uh, obviously these are, the, the displacements are transferred, so no problem. So we go to uh, load, again force on that top point, in the direction Z, I put a dummy load of minus one or reference load of minus one Newton. Good. You say, okay. <clears throat> All right. I'll, close that. I'll make sure that there's too many, not too many of these. <laughs> I did this thing several times, so I, let me delete this. Something is wrong here. Let me delete this. I guess I'm going to have to delete it from up here. Delete this, delete that. And by the way, I wanted to call this thing uh, uh, not force two, I want to call it axial, compressive axial. This is just for our own bookkeeping load. <coughs> and you say okay. 
All right, good. So here is our buckling. There is a compressive axial load acting. And now we're going to go and run it. Uh, we can do a model check, scenario, uh, simulation check, and simulate. But I'm pretty sure that's okay. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to say simulate. Well, this is going to be running and that better give me the number that I have in the in the table which is uh, almost uh, almost 1 million uh, 1 million uh, Newton okay okay good so let's check that good so let me close this notice that I have two steps this is step one which was static we already saw that now we go to axial step okay and oh, that scale remember that scale that i put made it look like that that's terrible so let me go do the following let me double click on this thing making state scale of one okay but which uh, which uh, which buckling load do i want i want the first one right there okay now let's check a couple of things and that is uh, these numbers okay so you can see that uh, we got our uh, buckling load factor is 5.04 10 to the 6 which means 5 million newtons if you go back to our table it's right here 100 100 under 100 lateral load of 100 newton is uh, 5 million uh, pounds now let me remind you when i did this thing uh, where this 100 100 pound was in the same load step the answer came out to be almost a million okay and then of course after that it's kind of nonsense but uh, anyway but when you put it in separate steps okay uh, the separate steps, uh, this is more reasonable, and uh, 100 Newton, it is uh, 100 Newton lateral load, no, which is pretty much nothing. Okay, remember, this is one meter long piece of steel, 60 millimeter in radius, okay, and you apply 100 Newton, so that applies a little bit of deflection, but not to the extent that uh, makes that much of a difference as far as load buckling is concerned. And uh, by the way, I made a, I made a comment a few minutes ago i said that this value should come out to be almost one million but that i was i was really didn't mean it that one million was for the case where they were placed in the same uh, step so uh, my mistake i'm sorry i should not have said that but this agrees this this calculation agrees with what we have there now a couple of other things uh, let me show you what happened when i got this weird thing so let me double click on this if the load factor is one and i made it well it made it one because of the the fact that uh, it was made one automatically and then i could have changed it but if i made make this thing i don't know maybe a million okay it's also going to multiply these things by a factor of a million which i don't want it good but one last thing that i want to say is that if you want to see the cross section here you double click on it uh, this this was discussing or this was brought up in uh, tutorial four and five but i'll do it again so if you click on the last tab and here instead of beam style just say beam profile apply for visual purposes it also shows you this okay this is, this is totally useless not uh, not needed but if you want to see this cross section there we are okay tutorial seven is going to be doing no buckling analysis. We're gonna include both of these things, the lateral and the axial uh, force in two uh, static step and see the post buckling effect and uh, things of that type, okay? Good luck.